I mean, if I had to repeat a day every day, I mean, being at the beach is not the worst. I mean, it would suck to die every day, but at least you could spend the day at the beach. Hello, everyone. This is David Stark from Watcher Pass. And today I'm here to talk about a new movie that just hit Regal Theaters, 645. It's being released in select Regal Theaters. I think it's like 95 theaters have it. Uh, and then also digital and on demand. So you can check it out at your local Regal if it's playing there, or you can check it out at home, just, you know, wherever you want to see it, you can watch it. And it's it's a really good indie horror film. I'm going to go into you know, a little bit about the film, three things I liked about it, three things I didn't like about it, and then discuss the ending. So if you don't want to know anything about the film, you want the mystery to stay alive when you're watching it, then, uh, you know, stop watching, go see the film, or you can check out the written review on watcherpass.com. It's where I post my written reviews. They're much more vague, uh, spoiler-free. And then you can come back and watch it. But if you, if you don't care about that, or you've seen it, you just want to know more about the ending, then, uh, you know, let's let's go. Or, or if you've seen it and you just want to know more about the ending, uh, let, let's talk about it now. Uh, so in 645, you have a couple... Uh, Bobby, played by Michael Reed, and Jules, played by Augie Duke, who are actually a real-life couple. They, they are a real couple, and they're a couple in the film. Um, they are at this kind of cute seaside bed and breakfast type place uh they're in they're in new jersey on the jersey shore uh and they're in the off season so it's it's pretty dead you know if, if you've if you've been to a beach town if you live near a beach town especially on the east coast it gets pretty cold in the winter so the beach towns tend to be pretty dead in the winter and then they you know pop back to life in the summer so they are visiting it during the winter there's a lot of weird quirks about the place the hotel is not the cleanest there's some characters that are a little odd um, so, you know, it kind of starts off strangely, but they make the most of it. And at the end of each day, they both get killed by this strange hooded figure. He's got, he's not wearing a mask, although it looks like he kind of does. He's got kind of this weird, you know, this like mask looking face and like really wide eyes. And his mouth is kind of open like, ah, uh, like this. And they always get killed in the same way. So Jules gets her throat slit in a strange way with like a, a box cutter like this. And then, um, Bobby gets his head snap like this it's always like a like a wrenching motion and it happens every day and, and bobby is the only one that remembers it so a lot of the film is him trying to figure out like what can i do to stop this try he tries different things he tries different activities to just prevent it from happening and it never works um and so that's kind of the premise of the film and so three things i liked about it uh the first is the setting i think it's it's a really nice it's a really clever setting for this kind of a groundhog day like film you've got the beach town that's deserted which uh you know it's kind of nice because then you don't uh it really it really has a sinister kind of feel to it and they it's supposed to be on an island and so there's a ferry that only runs at certain times and so it also means that they're isolated on this island you know they keep uh, bobby keeps talking to the innkeeper i think uh gene um and he keeps saying like oh well the ferry's not running today i think it's a holiday or something or a, a day of mourning or a holiday so the ferry's not running that day so it kind of gives a reason for them to be isolated because like you know your first thought hey if this person keeps killing you just drive away like take a take a taxi out but because they're on this island and because the you know it's an isolated time they can't get off uh and and it also like the, the cute bed and breakfast does kind of lend itself like it, it's an interesting setting to be on the beach and have this beautiful kind of picturesque day and then have it end horribly so i think i thought that the setting was a really good touch and just a note it looks like this could have been shot during covid because uh you know it's pretty deserted and it's a small crew and a small cast this was actually shot right before covid they shot it in like I think January or February, right before everything shut down. Um, so it's, uh, and then they, they edited it completely remotely after kind of the world shut down. So it's this kind of interesting COVID-like film. I mean, the, the, all the filming was done beforehand. It was just a small indie project, uh, but then all the editing was done remotely and all the release was done kind of remotely. And it, it just kind of happened to open right when theaters were kind of opening up. So it was kind of an interesting timing for this film. The second thing I really love is the chemistry, the chemistry between uh, Bobby, played by Michael Reed, and Jules, played by Augie Duke. I mean, they're a real-life couple, so you know that there's there's chemistry in person, but you're always unsure if that trends is on the screen. But here it does. I mean, they, they're very comfortable with each other. The two of them kind of, they're a lot of fun. They, they do have some moments where they're arguing, but for the most part, you get to see this couple kind of exploring the town, 
you know, having fun, trying new things, and, and they're really comfortable together. And they, they have like some nice on screen chemistry, which it's probably because they're a real life couple, but you never know, right? Sometimes if you're a real life couple and then you, you try to go on this, on, you know, you try to act, maybe something's a little unnatural, but they, they feel very natural on screen. The last thing I really love is the dread. I mean, you know, you kind of know what's going to happen, but uh, the film always sets it up pretty well. You're kind of always expecting something bad to happen. And so that is kind of the premise of a Groundhog Day like film. But there's also like little hints throughout that there's something not quite right about this. Some of the characters will say things to Bobby that make them make it seem like they know more than they originally let on. And some of the things that they find are just a little bit unsettling. Like Bobby every day finds like this clump of hair on the soap, which is just kind of disgusting. Uh, and some of the characters will sometimes like mention things that happened in the past that they wouldn't normally know. So there's just little hints here and there of, of kind of the dread and the weirdness of the situation. And there's also the, the mask character. He, he appears occasionally. So sometimes he just appears randomly. Sometimes he'll appear early on and then just kind of show up. So the film does have a good sense of dread, especially when you're kind of waiting and wondering what will happen. The things I didn't love about it. Uh, the first thing is it's kind of a, a minor point. I, get, it, I, I say the repetition. I mean, they actually did a pretty good job of mixing up what was happening. I mean, it's a small indie project. They don't do like a crazy number of, of different story loops, but they do enough to keep it fresh and to keep it different. Uh, the thing I didn't love is that the death is always the same and it's always in the same kind of manner. I guess, you know, maybe I would have liked for them to kind of mix up how it happens. I, th the reason that it's the same, it's an important reason why she always gets her throat slashed and he always gets his head broken, but I wish it would have maybe, maybe he would have appeared differently or it would have killed her differently. It always seems like she like bumps into him in a surprise and then, you know, and then she gets lit and then Bobby just kind of sits there and is like so confused or so angry. And then his, his he gets his neck broken. It would have been nice to maybe have Bobby try to run one time or, you know, maybe her not bump into him because it always seems like he just randomly appears. But, you know, it's a minor point. They did a good job of kind of changing up the story as it goes along. The second thing I didn't love is the poor choices. Uh, but that's kind of expected from a horror film, especially a Groundhog Day like horror film. Like they're going to die every day, but it did feel like some of the days they could have maybe done something differently. Like there was a day when basically they stayed in their room the whole time and didn't leave. And then she finally was like, I'm going to take the dishes out. And you're like, don't just, just wait. But she does. And then she actually takes the dishes out fine. But when she comes back in, there he is. Um, it just felt like sometimes they made obvious choices that, are necessary to move the story along, but uh, you know, made me a little angry that they made those choices. But it's a horror movie. It's kind of what's gonna happen. It is what it is. And the last thing I didn't love, although I did appreciate it, is the ending. And I'm gonna go into that now. Uh, it's a little confusing and I, it's intentionally that way. I actually talked to the director, Craig Singer, uh, in an interview and he basically said he liked that there's multiple interpretations about the ending. So it's, it's an intentionally confusing, uh, which doesn't you know sit great with me, but. I appreciate the ending. It's an interesting kind of mix of ideas and I'm going to go into it and hey, you know what, if I get it wrong or if you have a different thought, just drop a comment. Like I'd love to hear other thoughts about what happened. I'd love to hear thoughts about the movie. So just, you know, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. So in the end, you know, they've been going through this Groundhog Day like situation for a while and Bobby gets understandably frustrated because he can't figure out how to get out of this loop and how to get out safely and save jewels. And so he gets drunk, uh, very, very drunk. And then it's this cycle. It goes into kind of like a montage of, you know, him dying, got, waking up, dying, waking up, dying, waking up. What you learn, though, in this, in throughout the film, uh, is that Bobby had an affair and got someone else pregnant. I think it was one of Jules's friends that he did this with. Um, and he never told her. So eventually he... I think he figures out that this might be something important. This only took him like 25 deaths to figure it out. Um, and so he tells Jules what happened. She's understandably upset. So she, you know, gets in a fight with him, leaves the hotel room. He kind of goes back to her. Or they're at a bar. So she gets in a fight with him. 
he leaves she leaves the bar he heads back to the hotel falls asleep and then wakes up but jules is next to him but it's the new day so he broke whatever this loop was he got out of it so he wakes up kind of happy even though jules isn't there um and then goes back to you know goes back home gets the ferry because the ferry's running now and goes back to his apartment when he gets there some cops take him you know they they look like they're questioning him they take him into a room and they question him for a bit and then you find out they, they kind of start telling him what happened they you know they say you know what happened tell us why you did it things like that and eventually it goes into like a a, a flashback a, a flashback and it shows him you know, with bloody hands holding the engagement ring. And he's alone in this room. You're not really sure why. And then it's kind of a, a montage of some different pieces of footage. You know, it shows him and Jules arguing. Like looks like after he told her about the affair. And then it shows her kind of throwing his clothes at him and her packing up about ready to leave. Uh, they get into a big argument and eventually Bobby slaps her. And you know, slaps her pretty violently a couple times. Uh, and so she starts to leave. Ultimately, it shows Bobby slitting her throat with a box cutter or a, you know, exacto knife, whatever you want to call it. So that's the imagery. That's why she kept dying from that. Uh, but, and then it gets a little stranger because she's bleeding out uh, and he cuts her back open, like peels her skin back, like serial killer style and carves a heart in her back with, you know, their initials, kind of like what they did at the beach earlier in the film. He does that to her corpse, and she's still breathing, which I don't know if that was, I mean, I think, I think that's more imagery, um, but I'm not, I'm not certain. Uh, and then he kind of holds her as she's, like, dying with her back undone. And then as this, after he holds her, it kind of goes to the flashbacks of them dating, you know, some of, the, some of their happier moments. Uh, and then it shows the cops taking him away and locking him up. And when he's in the prison, the like hooded uh, murderer kind of shows up in the prison. But he doesn't kill him, but he's kind of there just for like, I think, added dread. And then it flashes back to some of the beach scenes. You know, some of the scenes that we'd seen before at the beach, except it's not Jules with him. It's the other, it's the other woman. It's the woman that he had an affair with. So Bobby finds this note in his bag. And then it flashes to him in prison reading the note. And then you find out what the note says. And here's what it says. And the note is from Jules, and it basically is telling him that she's done, um, you know, that, that he's a violent person and she doesn't like it. And she's, you know, that she doesn't want to be there when he finally explodes. Uh, she also tells him that she knows about the affair and that he's with, you know, he's probably already, have, you know, screwing, I forget her name, Amber, maybe. I forget what her name was. Um, and that he should just stay away and not contact her. So now... Bobby's in prison. Then he still has a note, and he. But then it flashes to like him out of prison, like on on the front porch of a house smoking, and he basically says like the doctors want him to read this note every day, um, you know, to remind him, I guess, what he did. But he says, "Why would he do that?" Because he thinks he's a hero. He thinks that you know he didn't do anything wrong. So you have this weird kind of like contradiction in the ending you're not really sure what's real and what's not so here's my take on it i'm probably wrong like i don't know who knows what happened but you know if you have a different thought if you've noticed something else uh in the film let me know but here's what i kind of think happened um so i think that jules left the note in his bag when she knew he was going to the beach and or when he knew she she knew he was going on this trip i don't know what the trip was but we'll say he you know he, he came up with some excuse for why he had to leave so he could go have you know sex with the person he was having an affair with so she left the note in his bag he goes on the trip is with you know his mistress um and I'm not, maybe they find out that she's pregnant there i'm not certain when that happens in the timeline but he probably finds the note when he's there and then comes back to either confront Jules or apologize or something, you know, try to make it right. She is done with him with the note. So she seems like she's probably done with him altogether. She probably tells him no, fights back, and then he gets angry. And now the violence in him finally, you know, explodes, I guess. And he probably ends up killing her. And then I don't, 
I'm not sure if if he goes and flees to the beach, maybe, but going back to where he was before, maybe he still had a room there, so he went back to try to, I don't know, establish an alibi or something, or he like went in his head and went back to like the, the last time he was happy, which might have been at the beach, and just kind of stayed there for a while, um, you know, mentally. Maybe he had a mental breakdown, and maybe that mental breakdown could explain why he did that weird kind of grotesque thing to her corpse if that happened in real life and not just in his head um and then eventually he came up from it after he kind of realized what he had done or admitted to himself what he'd done uh but maybe he actually had been insane and so that's why he ends up at the porch and not at the prison uh and has to read the note because maybe he you know actually was insane although i think if, even if you're insane they wouldn't let you go back to your porch they'd probably send you to like a mental asylum so he would be in some sort of facility uh but you know so i think you know in the end he i think he did kill jules uh probably um and then ended up alone and maybe broken from reality but that's just my thought. Like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened. But the film itself is a good film. It's a, it's a good, well-put-together indie film. And it's very impressive that they did all this, you know, with limited time, on a limited budget, and then also editing it completely remotely during COVID. Like, it's, it's a really great project, and it's a really fun film. It has a really good, it has good production values. Uh, you know, there's a few little things here and there, but overall, it, it, it looks like a solid indie film, one that would be good to see in theaters and one, you know, that you could watch at home. So... That's my review of 645. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. And if you want to know more about the film, check out, I have an interview with the director, Craig Singer, up on the YouTube channel. I also have an interview with the stars, the real life couple, uh, Michael Reed and Augie Duke, up on the YouTube channel as well. So you can check those out if you want to know a little bit more about the film. Uh, we talk a little bit about the production and some of the issues that they ran into. And also like, when they were filming, did they hear about this thing that was approaching, you know, this little, this disease that was on the horizon? And so you can find out a little bit more about that. And also, you know, what it was like editing the film remotely, what it was like promoting the film remotely, how the timing just kind of ended up. There's a lot of uh, really good insights from all of them uh, in those videos. So take, give those a watch and thank you so much for watching. Thank you.